Hi folks. Would you believe me if I told you these two shapes were the same shape? Well, not really the same shape, but they shared a pretty crazy common property. So here it is. It's a, called a solid of constant width. How the heck do we make it? Link in the video description. Go binge on some Wikipedia, the Relo Triangle. Super cool. We're running 600 surface feet a minute, max RPM of 5,000, 4,000 per rev, and I'm doing a peck depth of 20,000, and we're coming back and cleaning it up. I faced it off, that lets me go below center line, which grooving doesn't tend to like to do. That's one of the tricks with Fusion 360 lathe cam, especially the grooving op, is there's a lot of settings. It to me is not quite as intuitive as the milling. Part of it's that's more powerful, part of it that there are some big changes I've, I've heard coming in improvements in lathe cam. And then it is just a series of grooves. Why are there so many? It has to do with controlling where the toolpath goes when, leaving just enough to cut us off. Again, download this file and you can take a look. The big things to pay attention to, how you handle confinement, adding front and backside stock, whether you have rest machining on, and then whether you're doing roughing passes or not. Stick around at the end of the video. We'll go through this in more detail. Exciting news, really easy to model. Right click, new component. I'll hide the other one just to show you. I'm gonna go sketch, point. What plane do I wanna sketch on? Doesn't really matter, but I'll pick this guy right here that's between the green and red. Pick a point here and I'll pick a point arbitrarily over there. D for dimension. Click on this guy, click on this guy, and let's say one inch apart. Now one problem is right now it's one inch apart, but I can move it up and down. I'd like to lock it in place, horizontal to that guy. So I will click horizontal, vertical, one, two. Now it's locked into place. C for circle. The center of my circle is our center point. Snap it to the point we just made. C for circle. I'm gonna sketch another circle on the circumference and I can't snap it horizontal, so I'm actually gonna intentionally snap it out of place down here with the circumference snapping to the origin of the other circle. Now, horizontal, vertical, click there, there, that locks it to C for circle, one last circle at the intersection of these two, snap it to either side here. That shape in there is our Rouleau triangle. How do we make it a solid L for line? Click here, go straight up. I now have a face. S on your keyboard, R-E-V, revolve. You can also get to that by going to create revolve. I'm gonna click on this face. So that gives me the one profile selected. And then axis, I'll click on select, choose the vertical line there, click okay. That's it, we now have a solid of constant width. The cam. Good news and bad news. Good news is it's really easy to get your basic lathe cam down. We use templates, we love them, we share them with folks that support our channel on Patreon. Our lathe template has all your common stuff with profiling, grooving, threading, etc. So it's as simple as right clicking on a setup that you've made, create from template, and for me it's called Tormach Lathe. 
that creates all of these operations because lathes and cam use the solid model, many of them self-generate, which is really, really cool. For this part though, I wanted to use the Sandvik, I believe it's a two millimeter button uh, grooving tool. I really like this tool. It saved my butt about a year ago on a job. In fact, I think it's the first Sandvik tool I bought and it was it convinced me that it's worth its weight in gold. I was struggling with the job, with surface finish, with, with insert life, and this thing was just, it opened my eyes. So the reason I'm using it here is that I want to use one tool to cut this whole part just to make it easy and improve the accuracy. We're facing with the same tool because I need to go past center. That's the problem with a button tool is if I didn't go past center, it would really only drive that tip down to about right there. And you can see because I'm cutting with a tangency at kind of nine o'clock here, I really want to go past center. And even there, I'm just coming really not even, maybe I probably, should, probably could go a little bit further. Next pass is the most generic. What's happening? We're roughing out most of the shape. I'm leaving some stock and I'm leaving a lot on the back side. So how do I get there? I'm using confinement. So I'm adding 50 thou to the front side. That lets the tool extend further in front. I actually don't even know if I need that here. The negative 50 thou backside stock is key. That's what keeps the tool over here because I'm telling the tool, you've got to say 50 thou to the right of the backside of the part, which means it can't dive down any more than here. And I'm maintaining the structural integrity of this part so I can do all my work here without it becoming weak. And most of the settings are here in passes. Again, the big ones are clearing passes and then setting your pecking depth and the grooving step over, leaving four thou. Next pass, I start to work on this backside. We're right here. Hit play. I'm just starting to cut that away. Still pretty good amount of work holding though on the back side of this part. And then I'm coming back here and, and doing that cleanup pass. That was actually the next operation here. The big difference with this one is we're not doing roughing passes. That's what causes it to not do any sort of pecking like you normally see where you're coming in and out with the grooving tool, but rather just follow along the profile. So you can see it's doing that and walking up the surface. A really important setting as well that you can play with is whether you want it to go front to back, back to front or both ways. I think there's also an up down. Um, up or down, you can read the pop-up window that describes what those do. Now we start to work on the back side. I kind of take one last pass before we part it off. That gets me to there. How much stock is left there? Well, the way I'm doing that is I'm setting an inner radius limit of diameter of 0.15. So 150 thou, a little bigger than an eighth of an inch. That's actually a pretty good amount of material to hold on to, given the work that we're doing back there. Then I finally go for it and we finish the part off. Folks, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Why does fusion cut air on the lathe cam? I'm actually really proud of how I got this lathe cam kind of dialed in and tranched into doing different things, but darn it, there's still a few things I can't figure out. More lathe parts to come though. I know I joke that I hate lathes, but we have a couple projects that I think will be fun to include and tie it all together. Again, folks, take care. Thanks for watching. See you next Wednesday.